Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Gold and silver rebound as signs of economic trouble loom. Let's explore. Yes, there is a movement in a positive direction for all of the metals today. Everything is in the green. Gold and silver, platinum, palladium, and rhodium are all up. And in fact, they've almost kind of recovered all of those losses we saw the past few days. So what's behind some of this? Well, we have an article here from Kitka News that talks a little bit about it. Before we get into that, I want to encourage you to hit that notification bell so that you can be apprised of the latest video that makes its way into your feed and notifications. Um, and also hit the thumbs up button. Also will help to kind of get the video out there. Very much appreciated as we explore these movements in gold and silver prices here. Uh, even as ISM Manufacturing Index rises, which is the highest level since 1983, there's other factors too, I think, that come into play. The gold market continues to hold on to early session gains, even as U.S. manufacturing sector saw a significant rise in sentiment in March, according to the latest data from the Institute for Supply Management. Thursday, the ISM said its Manufacturing Index showed a reading of 64.7% for March, up from February's reading of 60.8%. The data was much more robust than expected, as consensus forecasts were calling for a reading around 61.5%. According to reports, sentiment in the manufacturing sector is at its highest pace or level since 1983. Readings above 50% and such diffusion indexes are seen as a sign of economic growth and vice versa. The further, uh, the farther an indicator is above or below 50%, the greater or smaller the rate of change. The gold market is holding steady despite signs of growing momentum in the U.S. economy. June gold futures last traded at $1,723.30 an ounce, up 0.45% on the day. Although the U.S. economy continues to see a robust recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, Timothy Ford, chair of the ISMs, ISM, said there are still challenges the manufacturing sector faces. The manufacturing economy continues its recovery in March. However, survey committee members reported that their companies and suppliers continue to struggle to meet increasing rates of demand due to the COVID pandemic impacts limiting availability of parts and materials, extended lead times, wide-scale shortages of critical basic materials, rising commodities prices, and difficulties in transporting products are affecting all segments of the manufacturing economy. Looking at the components of the report, the New Orders Index rose 68% last month, up from February's reading of 64.8%. Meanwhile, the Production Index rose to 68.1% up from the previous level of 63.2%. You know, a case in point would be like things like copper prices going up, doubling. We have seen lumber prices go, uh, I mean, soar to levels we haven't seen in years. High, very high levels for um, lumber because there's a lot of demand for the wood. Uh, the labor market also improved with the employment index rising to 59.8%, up from February's reading of 54.4%. However, improved growth continues to come with the cost of inflation measures remain consistent at higher levels. The ISMM price index fell to 85.6%, down slightly from February's reading of 86%. And also, we have to think about generally overall, the employment numbers were not as good as those preliminary numbers have come out now. So there are some things and we're only starting, consumers are only starting to see the effects of inflation, according to Andrew Hunter, and he's right. In fact, even things like toilet paper heard today, uh, we're going to be starting to see prices increase for 
many paper products, including toilet paper and boxes, as many people have been ordering things uh, through the pandemic. I myself, have, you know, when we order coins and we get them shipped to them in boxes, well, we may start to see these things increase in price. In fact, the era of free shipping and uh, is really going to be baked into these prices and premiums for precious metals. And I think that's part of the why we're starting to see some of the premiums we're seeing is packing material. More people order small orders and the like. It's got to be packaged in something. The plastic wrap, paper wrap, boxes, corrugated materials, all sorts of things. So when we have this thing, we know inflation is here. It's been here for a while. We know it's coming at a greater pace and level than we've seen before. I'm not ready to say that hyperinflation is right around the corner, but at the rate we're going, I think there are things like what we're going to talk about next are going to speed it up. The IMF, a $650 billion liquidity boost could happen in August. That's not going to bode well because this is a hidden quantitative easing program happening from the, directly from the IMF using special drawing rights. A $650 billion increase in International Monetary Fund reserves could be distributed to member countries in August, according to Reuters, but only a small portion is likely to be converted to hard currency by poor countries, U.S. Treasury officials said on Thursday. The Treasury has formally notified Congress of its plans for the new allocation of IMF special drawing rights starting a 90-day consultation process that will be completed in early July, officials told reports, reporters on a conference call. The $650 billion SDR allocation must be approved by the IMF Board of Governors, made up of the institution's 190 member countries. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen first backed the SDR allocation, previously opposed by the Trump administration in late February of last week. IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva said she would present the fund's smaller executive board with a $650 billion SDR expansion proposal by June. Some Republicans in Congress have criticized the move for providing reserves to rich countries that don't need them, as well as the countries they view as U.S. adversaries, including China, Russia, Iran, and Venezuela. By the way, Iran and China are working out an energy deal um, that will be uh, talked about with oil and the like, and it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. They've also raised concerns about more U.S. borrowing required to allow countries to convert their SDRs to hard currency. And those SDRs are going to be made the breadbaskets of other currencies out there. Um, only about 2% of the last SDR's allocation of about $250 billion in 2009 was exchanged for underlying currencies. So these special drawing rights are made up of dollars, euros, yen, sterling, and won. So that's the breadbasket of the currencies that are out there and for these special drawing rights. The time, this time around, the percentage is likely to be higher. So that's quantitative easing. And even if it's 2% of this uh, same amount um, you know, of the $650 billion, still a lot of money. Um, continued spending needs to be fight the COVID-19 pandemic, but still small. About 70% of the allocation will go to G20 countries, which have more resources and are seen as unlikely to cash in their SDRs. According to a Treasury fact sheet, low-income countries could, would get $21 billion in SDR reserves, with about $212 billion going to other emerging markets and developing countries, excluding China. The United States retains the right to refuse to purchase SDRs from any country whose policies run counter to U.S. interest, the Treasury fact sheet said. Many large countries, such as advanced economies in China, already hold access SDRs and are very unlikely to request to exchange their new SDRs for hard currency. But again, you know, just it's a hidden way to create money out there. And I think this is not going to bode well. But, you know, the thing is, is they're always layering, layering these things and creating this hidden money and, 
And we know what the IMF wants to do too. They want to totally reform uh, reserve currencies and have their world reserve currency um, basically take over everything. Uh, one world currency, we know what that's about. I want no part of it. This is why we hold gold and silver to protect ourselves because it's God's money. And it's been recognized in the United States in the past as being money. Our currency used to be gold and silver coins. Well, they st you still get those from the government, by the way. The form of eagles and buffaloes. And uh, I would encourage you to get some if you haven't gotten some already. So there you have it. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, comment section below. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please hit the notification bell. Please rate, share this video on all the social media platforms that you can muster up that you, maybe you are a part of. Comment and subscribe.